Yeah, you can sit there. I'll sit there. I'll move the eggs over this side. Okay, you can sit there. Mummy's got a helper this morning, aunties. I wanted to do a um, like a coffee and a chat this morning, but because Mummy's been home, um, been away, I've got other demands on my time. Of course. I don't drink as well, do you? Oh no. That's it. Good boy. Good boy. You're doing well. Mm hmm. So don't worry. It is just tap water. I just fill my bottles up. <laughs> I just have a bottle like for a few days and then just fill up from the tap because we get water from Millie, don't we? So we can take Millie out. And she's always got some water. So. We are going to just pop the eggs from here into here. But you're not going to do. You're just going to watch me, aren't you? Sitting there watching me. And then I'm going to get the peas out. You can help me get the peas out, though. So we can cook peas for grumpy for tea. And because it is a coffee and a chat, it's not coffee, unfortunately. I don't have, I don't have any coffee. I've even run out of me little espressos. Espresso. So I've got a pucker, breathing eucalyptus, because I have a bit of hay fever. Now we're back home again. <laughs> um, you can have toast in a minute, Mummy. The bread machine made us um, some bread yesterday, so we had a French loaf made in the bread machine. You can have some in a minute, then. My mum's ready. Okay, and then here I'm going to try and sourdough. Me and Ross love sourdough when we buy it, and it's quite a pricey um, for the. It's quite pricey to buy um, per loaf, and we both like it. So I said, well, this is going to be one of my things I'm going to try to do. So this is my sourdough starter. Now, I've never made it before. I have a really capable bread, bread machine that makes the bread. So um, we don't have sliced bread anymore. We, um, Russ has wraps, so now for work. So we don't really have much bread. We probably, we had bread on holiday and we maybe have one loaf in a, in a month of bread. Neither of us really eat that much bread. And I don't like, neither of us like sliced brown loaves of bread. Um, and I don't know, white bread is just, it's a bit sticky sticky to my i don't know what's what i'm trying to say sticky to the roof of my mouth yes and so i made a french loaf in the um in the bread maker and it was just flour water and yeast i believe there's only three ingredients flour water yeah i think that's all it was but it was this flour and then i made and i made a loaf for my daughter um, as well because we bought back some jam for, for them from the Lake District and this is for my mother-in-law honey because she makes her own jam and her own um, marmalade um, she doesn't actually make that much jam but she definitely doesn't get any honey doesn't do honey so we thought we'd get her some honey and it's actually made in Cumbria so we got that and then there's something else there Anyway, we better get on and do these eggs then, haven't we? And now we can answer some questions while we're doing it. What do you think about that? Hmm? Hmm. You want another drink? <sighs> you got to say, look at me, aunties. I'm a big boy sat up here. Look at me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. And mummy's also making sausage rolls this morning. So they're in the oven. Little ones, so I'm trying it out. I haven't made sausage rolls for a long time and... Um, so I'm trying it out um, for my daughter's uh, baby shower. And we've got, tonight we've got potatoes from our garden. We've got radishes from our garden. We haven't, I don't think we have any carrots this time. I don't think Ross did carrots. But now I'm going to shell some peas, the last of the peas from the garden. They won't make very many in them. So I don't think they're all full. That one is chocker block with them. Then we no, see that one isn't he's pretty flat. But anyway, we're gonna do that, aren't we? So there are well I've got to do the eggs first. 
I mean, yeah, if you hold on to that bottle, don't try not to spill it because um, we don't want that broken, do we? Um, so talking about my daughter and her baby shower, this is where I find out that my eggs, I didn't leave my eggs long enough, I bet. <laughs> I am real useless cook. <laughs> I just, I don't really, I kind of like, you know, having a go at different things. But we'll see when he's open. He looks pretty good. <laughs> I don't set the timer. Well, I did. I do, but I never. I never know whether the eggs are going to take very well. If we buy eggs that are um, like fresh from the side of the road, um, a lot of them don't. The shells break. So I don't know if there's something that I should be adding to the water to stop the shells from cracking. It smell very nice, but it was not floating. It's eggs. How many have we got now? Two. Yeah, two. I've got these eggs in the Lake District and they are hard, hard shells. Wow. Um, oh yeah, that shell's really, really hard. Um, okay, so talking about my daughter and, her, and obviously our grand baby. <laughs> Not long now, guys. 17th of August, he's due. So I think she's 34 weeks. She'll soon be 35 weeks. I mean, how crazy is that? And um, when I, she asked me if I wanted to go last time to see him. And it was so cute. I think I told you. I'm sure I told you. <laughs> and um, oh, God, the scans these days are amazing, absolutely amazing. Oh, it was wonderful seeing him, and I'm, and I'm so grateful that they asked me if I wanted to because you know this is their time. They've worked um, really hard saving and yeah, through COVID and that before they could start again on trying the IUI. So. Um, yeah, he's a much, much um, wanted little man. So, oh, see, this <laughs> the shells are quite hard. Um, so, yeah, a mummy was banging noisy, wasn't she? Mummy was, yes, I would. I wake up Polly. You say we don't want to wake up Polly, do we? Don't want to wake up Polly. James is awake, but we definitely don't want to wake Polly up. She needs to have a sleep. Yeah, she does. She was trying to bite you, wasn't she? I know. Um, I don't know if you saw the video of um, Molly's first holiday. And she, I went to... Um, where did I go? Smith's Toys. <laughs> and bought her... Um, got a new toy. But it's the linkable, linkable one. And so it, like plays music with the others and I, I'll show you that at some point. Um, I'll show you it like playing out. Anyway, somebody else was wanting it this morning when um, Toby was playing with it. I'm biting. So, oh, there's one more. I'm biting, so. She was feeling very aggressive anyway. So she's gone and had a nap. She did cry. She did, didn't she? No, you mustn't bite each other because it hurts, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, poor boy. But you're so good. You are so good. Look at you sat there helping your mom. Hey, so nice to be home with the babies. <laughs> anyway, get to the blooming point, Caroline. Um, but the question was, um, a, a quite a few times, are you? Um, still going to have your reborns when you have a grandbaby? And the answer to that is yes. Yes, yes, yes. I know for some people, I'm just going to pop that over here in my, in my bowl. I collect all the water I use in the kitchen and feed the plants. <laughs> um, try not to throw it down the drain. Um... I do want one. Do you want to try one? Mummy used to do it when she was little. Sounds like it's raining. 
A bit more so because Millie's out there. Mm. Do you want to try this one? Come on, let me sit up. Mm. You can hold it. Don't hold my don't hold my thumb. You can do it. Come on, open wide. Open wide. You're not gonna open wide. Alright, I'll leave it there. And then if you decide you to have it, okay, you can. Be careful. There. It sounds like it's raining. Got Millie's still outside. Um yeah. No, I of course I will still have my reborns. Will I still be doing YouTube? Yes. <laughs> Probably you know, not put my grandbaby on YouTube, you know, put his face out there. Um obviously I'll show you him, but you know, as he gets a bit older and a bit more recognisable, I'd rather not. And I'm sure my daughter would daughter and her wife would rather not as well. Whoa, look at that one, he's jam-packed. Wow. You're still not going to eat that one there? You can't save it for Lily. You can't save it for Lily, you've got to eat it. Or it can go in here. Grumpy later. Um, yeah, so no, that didn't even cross my mind. Um, my reborns are therapy, they're not toys, they're not playthings. There's plenty of toys here that are playthings. <laughs> There's plenty of collections down in my hillside, down in my she shed. But no, they're therapy. And um, yes, I interact with them every day. Um, no doubt I'll be down there, you know, for the first few weeks helping out. You know, making sure the girls get enough sleep and um and things like that so um, there will still be that but yes i will still definitely be having my reborns i mean is there any i know that there are people here who are watching who are grandparents oh sausage rolls who are grandparents um and have reborns so that is not my baby, it is my grandchild, okay? It's not my baby. Um, yes, I do know that there are people in the reborn community that have left when their children have had babies. Um, used to watch one lady in particular, but she, um, her daughter, she had a grandchild and, oh, he's not very nice, he's a bit yucky. We didn't put anything in there from it, did we? No. Um, I do, I think a buggy got to that one. Bugs are hungry too, that's right. Are you not hungry? You're not gonna eat that one. You wanna save it to Emma Jane comes back from nursery? I don't think so. I don't think we should. If you don't want to eat it, that's fine. You can put it in here for, for Grumpy for later. You can tell him that you helped do his tea, can't you? Um. Uh, yeah, and I can't. I, I was disappointed as well because she had a lot of toddlers. I like to see them, um, but anyway, you know, life changes for people. And um, at fifty-four, I know that. <laughs> I know that. Right? You make friends with somebody, and they, you know, and then you might not see them. You might see them for a few years, and you might not see them again. And that is life. That's life. Life just moves on. Just got to try not to let things get to you and live your own life. So, yeah, I I'm not living their life. This is for them to get a routine with, with Jack and, you know, get organised with Jack. And, of course, we're always there to help. To, if, you know, if they need help, we'll always be here for them. So, I'm sure we'll be babysitting a few few times. <laughs> be nice to have a little boy in a family. Oh, I'd like to get sausage rolls, haven't I? I've only got two more of these to do. Let me do these. The sausage rolls could do a little bit longer, looks like. Um, yeah, so that's the answer to that question, and that was a long answer. <laughs> so there'll still be lots of babies going on. Unless something drastic happens, you know, and we end up having to, you know, we're not even going to talk about drastic things, are we? It's going to be lovely, it's going to be wonderful, 
and nothing's going to happen and I guess he's going to be safely delivered and no positive positive thinking positive thoughts well that's just a few there for Russ just a few there for Mr Grumps isn't there and these can go in the fridge now we have them for our dinner shall we yeah yeah you have some eggs and some cucumber wow so I'm just going to have a look over here at the sausage rolls. Anybody for a rustic sausage roll? <laughs> They're um, rustic, okay. Okay, they're homemade, so <laughs> they're very rustic. We've got some outbreaking. <laughs> but I bet they're going to be delicious because my pastry is just yum, I know it. They could have done with a bit. Maybe a bit longer. But um, anyway, there we go. Yay! So clever mommy. She did it. She did. So that bowl over there is collecting the wastewater as I'm going along. Um, see from the sink, so, and is that, that tub there. And then this goes down the compost. And on our compost heap, and then next year we'll put it on the garden. Another question I get a lot of is they're just cooling now. Is um what do you want more drink? Is what does Russ can you hold it? No. I think they're like because mum's been away, they're all a bit want a bit of attention. Mum's got to put this stuff in the dryer, in the what in the dishwasher. Um What does Russ think of the rebounds? That's another thing. What does your husband think of the rebounds? Um, I think you've seen. <laughs> you've seen. And if you've been with me for a long time, you will see the development of Grumpy and the rebounds. <laughs> um, because it was hard. It was hard at the start. Um, it was something that I knew in my heart, in my soul, deep inside me, this is something that I knew I needed to do. Um, at that time as well, <clears throat> um, my youngest daughter had left home. So I really suffered with empty nest syndrome. And it's true, we do. We are, majority of women are nurturers. What, what are we meant to do? Just switch that off when our kids leave home. Um, that's why there are so many, so many ladies who have crisis. I don't know about how men feel. I, um, you know, from the few men that I'm friendly with, they all believe that, you know, they are 18, they go out and they make their own way. Um, but I suffered a lot from empty nest syndrome. And I think that might be another reason why the question about um, the grandbaby, he is not a substitute for anything. He's himself, he's his own little person. So he's not a substitute to me for all the baby boys that um, I miscarried. He is not a substitute. So, and and, uh, and he's not mine. <laughs> you know, he is not mine. I get to play the role of grandma. And um, at 54, I'm going to enjoy that role of grandma because I get really, really tired. <laughs> I was saying to my friend um, Sarah last night, on um, we were just chatting on, on Messenger, and I said that um, I need a holiday from my holiday because when I go on holiday with Grumps, he can't sit still. He is fidgety. He wants to do, you know, be out and... So we go out. I always find like a museum or he finds a he finds like a hobby craft or, so, or something like that for me. And I find Smith's toys and he goes, well, if you, do you want to go there? I'll take you there for the afternoon. And um, we went to Gretna Green and because um, we got married at Gretna Green and we went to the visitor, visitor center, which was really different than when, when, when we got married. Um, and uh, that was lovely. And then he said, there's a little outlet store at Gretna just outside of Gretna if you want to go there and I'll just you know I don't know what he did he sat on the van for an hour I don't know surfing I have no idea what he did because we also didn't have any internet at the at the caravan so at a caravan site um so he was like do you want to go there for an hour and 
and that's what I did. I bought it back at McDonald's because all Russ wants to do is drive around, look at the views. He, he loves being outside. I mean, I'm sure he would have liked to have been a farmer at some point in his life. He loves the outside in all weather, in all weather. Um, so that's what he likes to do. And driving around in his truck, which is like, you know, his trucks is like everything. Um, whereas I get find that a little bit tedious. So I like to, I look around for a place to visit. Um, and so that's how we like complement each other like that. And so as for the reborns, he knows. I mean, it was really horrible at the start. And I know that there are people watching this who have who hide, have to hide their reborns from their family, um, have to put them away when their grown up children come to visit have to keep them under the bed, have to keep them in the wardrobe. Um, and that is, to me, is really wrong because it's your home as well. And I really did struggle for a long time. And um, I have another old friend, Alison, and she will tell you that it was a struggle. Um, and uh, Amy and obviously Sheena. But it, Alison could really, like, see... How difficult it was and it really was um, hard and would I have separated from him for the reborns back at that time yes yes because I needed them to get well I had been carrying around a heavy burden my whole life working my whole life really hard working long hour well not long hours but working from home I was a teacher so I would mark all my work I had a huge desk at home that I worked from because I was like um kind of like a mobile teacher um I spent a long time teaching in one place um but you know I I had a desk at home I kept myself busy and I was busy all of the time because I didn't want to think about what was going on in my head. And I had my three girls and, you know, ferrying them around and doing all things. I had my dog, and not Millie. I had another little dog called Crystal. Um, and I just, that's what I did. I just kept my myself so busy that I didn't have to think. And in the end, I had a nervous breakdown. And the doctor said, you know, you have got to stop working. You need a break. You really do need a break. And because I... At that time, I was, I'd like reported the abuse. Um, I was dealing with the police. My dad was terminally, terminally, terminally ill with cancer. Um, and I was having a hard time at, at, in that position at work at that time. And um, so I gave up work and, and I was like, what am I going to do with myself? I don't know. I work, you know, I kept myself so busy. I was like, what am I going to do with myself? And I wouldn't think, and I was obviously, I had fibro, um, I had chronic fatigue, and I just kept on going. So no no wonder I had a nervous breakdown. Um, it, that's when, like my counsellor said about getting a doll, and, and that's when I got the, um, the tiny, fake tiny tears. I'll be forever grateful for the real tiny tears. I'm sure it was Deborah, wasn't it? It was you, Deborah, wasn't it, that sent her to me? I'll be forever grateful for her. Um, because I always wanted one. So anyway, I got this fake one. But I just couldn't interact with it because grown-up Caroline saw it as a doll. Yeah, okay, little Caroline. Uh, Carly. Come through. Saw it as a, a toy. And so we, it wasn't producing the effect that she had hoped. And then we found Reborns. And um, so I got Annie. And I first started taking Annie in a big bag. Over here you can get big like freezer bags from places um, like supermarkets like um, Asda, um, Sainsbury. No, I don't know if Sainsbury's do them actually. Tesco's. Asda definitely. Anyway, the big, big bags, and I used to put Annie in there, and I used to take her to the counselling like that. And I, it took me ages and ages to even interact with her. She used to just sit there, and, and I just would not speak. It's so funny. It's so, it's not funny. It is 
amazing what our bodies are like because when I was at counselling quite a lot of the times, I actually could not physically speak. Um, I held my hand over one mouth so the words wouldn't come out. It's been a long, hard struggle. So anyway, I started realising how much I loved Annie and how much I loved having reborns. And then I got um, then I got Finley, who was a little baby one. And then I got, I think I got Frankie then and then Harry after that. And um, Frankie was like the big girl me that when the abuse, the age of the sexual assault, sexual abuse, whatever you want to call it, started. Um, and so she provided another outlet for therapy for me talking. And um, and so I really had to explain to Russ all of this as well. Even, even when I didn't want to speak about it anyway, I found it hard to speak about stuff to the counsellor. So to try and then get Russ to hear what I was saying to the counsellor, to a man that is so logical, so, um, I don't know what you would say, he's very, very logical, he is so kind, he is gentle, but he's also very logical and he can't understand some of it, which is fine, he didn't go through it, did he, lucky, lucky, lucky him. And, uh, but I knew this was something, this is the way I would heal, is with these reborns. This is the way I would heal. And so, yes, I would have left. And it nearly got to that stage. Um, my counsellor was um, had got us into couples therapy, but Russ wouldn't go. Um, and there was a stage where he told me he didn't know if, it, how if he felt the same way about me anymore and that was really difficult um because like this is my childhood sweetheart you know telling me that and because he found it really difficult of course he did he when when we got together i told him i had loads of these issues but i never had ever told him about the abuse um but it is because of him that i have been able to speak about it and get the counseling and and do it because we have private counseling and that is very, costs a lot of, costs a lot of money each week um so when i was going and not even speaking to her i was like oh what's the point of being here i'm paying you and i'm not even talking to you <laughs> i did everything to try and get her not to want to counsel me but she's stuck with it it's not the same lady now that lady retired oh she was so lovely so kind um I had spoken about abuse many years ago. Um, after my youngest daughter was born, I had postnatal depression because um, my eldest daughter was like at the age where my all of my abuse started, and I kept having. A, that's when the flashbacks and everything started with her. Went well, not with her, but because she was at the age that things had started with me. Um, you know, terrible, terrible things. And um, and then I had postnatal depression and, you know, so I had a breakdown then as well. So it's hardly surprising. Then I, then I went to university, then I got my degree and people are like, how could you do all of that? When you have a nervous breakdown, you have postnatal depression. I was going to college with a five month old baby, breastfeeding her in between my classes. How could you do that? And I'm like, because I have multiple personality disorder. Go figure. I needed to be the breadwinner. We lost our house. I needed to be the breadwinner. So I had to do it. And um, when I was younger, all I wanted to do was be a history teacher. And I couldn't go back to my job that I would had after because of my postnatal depression and they eventually like let me go. Um, I had a nervous breakdown. They let me go. And I seen, um, I seen a different counsellor then. I was like... Um, not not hospitalized, but at that point, I I saw a lady twice a week in a one of those institutions. Um, oh, that one's gonna no, that's not quite ready yet. Um, and I needed to work. We lost our home. Um, 
the teaching it was. <laughs> and luckily, I finished my, all my teaching qualifications. I got offered quite a few jobs. Um, and I took one in a private school and that was the best thing I ever did. Leaving there was the worst thing I ever did. But um, I wanted to move on and I wanted to help people that had been in my position when I went back to college to go to university. Um, yeah, I did university with three children <laughs> and worked and worked. I needed to, I needed to. It was it was a very difficult, difficult time. So then and, um, and then, I, you know, I started with Russend. So it was really difficult. And I just thought, you know, I need to heal. I am in my 40s. I need to heal myself. I can't keep on like this. Um, you get to that point. And so, yes, I would have. And it really did get to um, a hard stage. So, and there's still been times when he said things. I mean, when we moved here, I brought over one of them. Um, I like we were moving in. And I brought one of them over. In, and I might have said this in a video at the time. I do have a playlist of all of our, like, moving when we bought this house. And when we were doing it up and going to look at it on a Sunday. Looking at the progress and things. Um... I might have said at some stage in there that when we moved in and I brought the stuff over, even though he, he that was my room, you see how my nursery is, and I'm so grateful for that, but you see how big his garage is, that was a real, yeah, and I think he finally realised it, that was, and he, he used to say, you're jealous of it, and I'm like, you're damn right I am, look at the size of room you've got for all your toys. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for that. I'm very, very grateful. But I had to keep them all in there, out of the way. So I, I had one in a carrier and I'd set him in the lounge and he said, that's not staying there. They're not staying there. And I said, well, I'm, they, this is my house too. They are mine. I won't fill here with all of the stuff when you're home, but I will throughout the day. I do my videoing because that is my hobby. And it gives me something to do in the day. It gives me a purpose. They give me a purpose. And talking to you, doing videos, sharing gives me a purpose. Am I lonely? Probably deep down, yes. <laughs> and I've, even though when you meet me face to face, you probably think I have no social anxiety or anything like that. I actually really, really do. Um, but, you know... <laughs> I'm going to make the most of it of being out there. I was told I'd be in a wheelchair by now. And I'm not. And I, you know, so I've got to. And so I'm filming this on Monday the 3rd. Monday the 3rd. We've been up really early this morning because my car to have MOT. Pass that. Making sausage rolls. So I want to take them over to my daughter so she can do her taste test for her baby shower. Her and her wife. And, um. Yeah, and so I wanted I wanted to do a question and answer on the way home because we had like a five, six, seven hour drive home um, from our holiday. But I was just just got in the car and I was just like, ugh. <laughs> and then I found the internet and I'm like, oh, I'm just going to lie here and listen to, listen to videos I have been able to watch all week and things like that and catch up with, you know, people. So um, that's what it, that, that was what I did and that's why I didn't do it. But I really wanted to answer those two questions what does Russ think? So it's took him a long time. So now, um, we've been here two years and I have, because like everybody kept saying about how big his, his garage was and, you know, and where was my play area? Yes, I have my reborns, but they are different. They are not play. I know some people will see it like, oh, you're playing with a dolly. No, it's therapy. Um, I needed somewhere for my other things I collect. You know, I love like vintage. I love crafting. And Russ was like, well, you can craft on a table and pack it away. Does anybody craft here on the table and then pack it away at the end of their session? Because I don't know anybody that does. <laughs> anybody who crafts has stuff everywhere. And yes, it looks tidy. You tidy it up every now and again. But, you know, it's still... What all your bits, I'm also the type of person that needs to see my stuff. Yes, it is raining. See my stuff outside, you know? So, <laughs> so then we got Hillside. And I'm so thankful for that. I'm so thankful. And I have all day with my Reborn, so I don't need them at night. 
um, to be in here. I, what I normally do is change them and now I take them into the bedroom and I change them. And Russ, now Russ doesn't care, okay? He wouldn't come out with a pram. No way, Jose. <laughs> he would not come to a doll show. He drive me to one, but he wouldn't come in. And I, I don't, you know, that's fine. That is absolutely fine. I don't have a problem with that. I do have a problem with um, with him if he's like, you know, if he moaned about him, but he doesn't at all, at all now. He doesn't say anything. And I think it's because more and more people in his side of life know I have them and they think it's fun. And, you know, we have friends that we've known for years, the pair of us, because we were at school together. So we we're in the same circle of people. And they just laugh and say, Caroline's always been a nuts. And that is true. <laughs> and if they knew now, if they knew, if they knew then what they know now, they would probably understand why I was nuts. <laughs> um, and so when people go down in my little um, hobby room, people ask to go in there. They love it. They love looking at the new things I've got. And Russ's mum speaks to the Reborns, you know. She named Molly. Russ's mum named Molly. And I think, you know, and Russ's mum gifted me her doll, didn't she? So I think that that's maybe what's helped him change his mind not change his mind make him a little bit softer about them and you seen actually in the video didn't you when I was feeding because I always say to him I'm just about to do some videoing um I'll be probably 10 minutes on this segment or whatever and um he's like yeah all right um and so if I'm in the house and he's here or like on a weekend I'll turn I'll turn the tv down and he's like yeah so I usually wait for the break you know the adverts and things um but on holiday, you know, it was dif different. It was different. I used was um, I would video with Molly in the morning when he was in the shower, um, and I would talk to her in the evening and all stuff like that. You know, Russ is used to all of that now, and you see what he was like. And people were like, "Oh, Russ is such a hoot. He is such a hoot." But it's took him a long time to get there. Believe me, <laughs> it has taken him a long time to get there, and that's fine. Because it's not his thing and he doesn't understand why a grown woman has to pretend to feed a doll. <laughs> he doesn't understand that. And I am so glad he doesn't understand that because it means he hasn't been through what I've been through. And he doesn't have the feelings in him that I have. And I, so I'm glad. I'm glad that he doesn't understand that. But for him to accept it... Um, is what I wish and what I would like and yeah he does he's basically you know well everybody says it's just Caroline who's out today then it's Caroline I don't put them away or anything you know this is my house and I got a lot of that um um support from Sheena and John because Sheena had them all out all the time and John and so um I got a lot of that support encouragement from Sheena and John um, and so there are people that I can talk to, like Alison has had rebounds for many years, much more than me. She doesn't have a YouTube channel. Um, hi, Auntie Alison and all the babies. And um, but her husband has accepted them, like all the years that she's had them. And um, he doesn't come into the shows, but he comes with her and drops her off sort of thing that Russ would do. So I'm just glad that Russ does that as well. You know, I'm just, I'm, I don't know. These people and their relationships gave me the courage to be who I wanted to be, who I need to be to heal. And am I healed? No, I'm forever broken. <laughs> I'm forever broken, guys. You know, things that happened to me before the age of six or even before the age of one, it was just hell and it, and it messes with your mind and you know and I've learned to accept that rather than block it all down and try and be somebody different and try and be somebody that society wants me to be because I can't I'm me <laughs> and um yeah so Sarah when I see you on Thursday I am me and I do talk a lot <laughs> Because I get excited. All of us get excited when we see new people and we love it and we just want to yeah 
So um, yes, on um, Thursday I'm meeting up with Sarah um, and it is about an, between, I don't know, an hour and 40 minutes to two hours depending on traffic um, to go down and see her. That's the bigger sausage rolls coming. Um, and the reason I always say the time is not to make Sarah feel bad, not to make Sheila feel bad, not to make anybody I meet up with feel bad. Like, Caroline's driven two hours to see me. It's not that. It's because people also also comment and send me messages. Oh, I wish I had a reborn friend close. <laughs> I don't. And they don't. So I'm the one that's able to drive further. And while I can still do that, I am going to do that. And there are so many of you who can't do that. Rachel messaged me and said, um, if you're still up here, up country, on our holiday, pop in and see us. Well, I would love to, Rachel, if it was just me, but I'm, you know, dragging along a person that is also on his holiday, and that's probably the last thing he wants to do. He wouldn't come in anyway. Um, we're looking at our holiday now um, in October, our next holiday in caravan. We're looking at that now um, because we're going to stay... Up in right at the edge of Norfolk somewhere, and he's he will take me to Sheena's, and then I'll go to the dog show with Sheena, and then come back, and then me and Russell have got the rest of the time up there. We to visit um, Sandringham and things like that together, because um, we've driven up round there, but we've never really, really done any of the sites. So we're going to do that. Um, yeah, so that basically is. The, like the real, real questions that I get a lot of, um, the comments get a lot of, what does your husband think of the reborns? What do your family think of the reborns? What will you still have the reborns when little baby Jack, your first real baby, <laughs> comes? And um, yeah, what does your husband, family? So my children, um, you probably know, I don't, if you've been here a long time, you know it, that um, I'm estranged from my youngest daughter. My middle daughter has always liked dolls her entire life, lo loves Barbie, um, you know, and so she's like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> and my eldest daughter is just very understanding and, yeah, if I want to take a reborn out in a pram, she'll be like, yeah, it's all right, mum. If I want to video, she's like, yeah, it's all right, mum. Carrie's the same, but... Carrie now lives in Ireland, so I don't see her so much. So when she's here, I just want to spend time with her, <laughs> which will be in a few weeks for the baby shower. She's flying over. Uh, I think they're flying over. Anyway, um, so that's what my family think. I've talked to you about friends. I've talked to you about Russ's mom. Russ's got a sister. We, I don't really have much to do with his sister, so, you know, it is what it is. They're here when she comes over, and that's it. Um... And anyway, the people that mean the most to me are my husband and my girls. So that's it. Oh, and my grandbaby when he comes now. Well, even now, before he's even born, of course, he means like the world to me. So, um, and I'll have everything that, that they need when they come over. They don't want me to bring anything, will they? Because <laughs> I'll, I'll have everything for him. That's even better, isn't it? Because now I can get to baby shop and I can go, yeah, it's for Jack, love. Yeah, it's for Jack. <laughs> um, and about, I get a lot of comments about wishing there was a reborn mummy near me. And one of the things that, I, another thing I did want to say is about reborn mummies. We all have these reborns for a reason. So don't be too pressured on each other. Don't be too hard on yourself like why can't I keep a friend um they're not messaging me so I'm not going to message them back don't waste my time I'm not going to waste my time uh, clearly in my point of view is um yeah that's hard it happens to me I do it to other people Terry's emailed me and um, before she, before, while I was on holiday and I just like only got internet when we were out and I was just like, I messaged you when I get back and I haven't yet. And but she's messaged me. So I have her emails to read. Hi, Terry. Um, but I'm always up front with people and tell them that is my anxiety. That is my social anxiety. I'm really, really good at face to face. 
but I'm just not good at messages. I'm not good until I really, really know you. And really, really know you means years. I'm not very good at, at making the first approach, which, you know, when you've been knocked down and that's so much, it, it is hard. But you, But equally, I understand that other people are going through things as well. So I might not have talked to somebody for five days and it will upset me that they've not messaged me and said, oh, you're right. But I value that that friendship so much that I would message them. If, especially if I don't see them um, on Facebook or on YouTube commenting. Um, so Ellie, are you OK? <laughs> Just want to put that out there. And Alison, who I only get to see when I go to Bristol or, or if she can get to Peterborough. Um, I really must get to you, Alison. I mean, I'm only just getting to Sarah. <laughs> Alison lives a long way away as well. Um, and then there's Sharon. I really want to see Sharon in Great Yarmouth. And it's just like, ah, ah, because I need days to rest. So I find it it's hard. It's so, so hard. And now with a grandbaby coming, I don't want to keep traveling too far away because, you know, I'm not going to be there at the birth. Well, I will be, but not in the room. Um, I'll be there if the hospital lets you there. They don't always. So we'll see. Um, I'll be in the hospital grounds anyway, waiting. <laughs> this is my baby having her baby. Oh, my goodness. Um, so I don't definitely I don't also want to travel too far. Um, but yeah, there are other people that I just really want to see and I just haven't got to yet. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but like I'm going to see Sarah on Thursday and I need to rest on Wednesday because I need to store up energy for Thursday. Thursday, I will absolutely tire myself out. And then Friday, I'll be so tired. I probably won't even talk to Russ when he gets home <laughs> because that is what happens. But people don't see that bit of it. Because on Wednesday, when I'm resting, I might be able to pump out a video. So I might have spent the day like doing like little clips here and there throughout the day, throughout lying. Because what I try to do when I have a rest day is stay in the bedroom, whether it's lying on the bed or in bed. Um, because as soon as I come out here, I start doing things and I can't do that. I really mustn't do that because I must rest. And then you've got to recover. You've got to recover the energy that you expended. So um, yesterday I spent most of the day in bed. Apart from when my daughter came over um, for lunch because I wanted to have a, have a catch up with her. Um, and the rest of the afternoon I was just like lying on the bed. Just don't get in it. But I was just lying on it. And, and I knew I had to stay there and read, you know, try and read a book or do something. As soon as I come out of that door, I start doing stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there you go. Those are the questions that I had that I really wanted to answer on the way home. So I hope I've answered them. If you have any more questions, just write them down in the comments. And next time we should be in, in Hillside. Um, I do want to do a tidy up Tuesday because obviously I've got all Molly stuff to take bring home. I've got um, I've got some. Charity shop. I've got two vintage dresses I want to show you that I've got in a charity shop and put them away. Um, you know, the nursery looks a bit of a wreck as per. So <laughs> it only ever stays tidy for about a week. I have all the good intentions. Yes, I'll take that off and I'll put that away. Take that off and I'll put that away. It doesn't always work like that. But you guys always put your toys away because you're so good. Oh, what are you doing with your leg? What are you doing? What did you do that for? want to twist your leg like that that's silly sausage oh no talking about silly sausages we've got sausage rolls in the oven so i'd say the oven's switched off don't worry say don't worry be happy don't worry be happy say so we ended up putting the pea in grumpy saucepan didn't we so I just want to say thank you very much for watching then if you've got any more questions um or comments about what I've said um you know, with the reborns and how things are for you. Um, because we are all in this together. There's no point arguing and bitching about stuff. We are all in this together because we all have something going on. And I challenge a, one person who has a reborn to say different. <laughs>
not in a horrible way, please. <laughs> it's just all light hearted fun around here, isn't it? Oh, would you want nothing serious? No. And cheers. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.